Hi friends, today we get to read my new favorite book called Just Like Abraham Lincoln. Here we go. Mr. Potts, my neighbor, looks just like Abraham Lincoln. Everyone says so. Everyone says it's amazing how much Mr. Potts looks like Abraham Lincoln. Everyone says Mr. Potts looks as much like Lincoln as Lincoln on a penny, maybe even more. Everyone says Mr. Potts has the biggest ears, the biggest hands, the biggest feet, and the kindest heart, just like Abraham Lincoln. Everyone says Mr. Potts has the saddest eyes, just like Abraham Lincoln. Mr. Potts isn't sad. He isn't sad one bit. Mr. Potts likes to laugh and tell funny stories, just like Abraham Lincoln. Mr. Potts will help anyone or anything in need. It could be a bird with a broken wing. Mr. Potts will know what to do to make it better. He'll set its wing with cardboard and tape. He'll nurse the bird, bring it food, and watch over it until the wing is mended. Then he'll take it back to the place where he found it and say, fly little bird, you are better. You can fly again. I like to walk with Mr. Potts. We talk and we talk. We talk about trees. Trees give us paper for books. Trees give us wood for our furniture and toys. Trees give us food. We talk about the sky. We talk about the sun and clouds. We talk about what causes rain and snow. We talk about the wind. The song of birds fill our ears. We talk about Abraham Lincoln. Young Abe's home was in the woodlands. He wore buckskin breeches, a coonskin cap, and ran barefoot through the wilderness. Young Abe could hoot like an owl and hiss like a snake. We talk and we talk. Mr. Potts collects things. Things like old letters, pictures, maps, a pair of spectacles, all from Lincoln's day. He even owns a stovepipe hat and a frock coat, just like those worn by Abraham Lincoln. You can hide secret messages in a stovepipe, Lincoln said. Mr. Potts read every chance he got, just like Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln said, the things I want to know are in books. Mr. Potts told me he said it. Mr. Potts says the poorest among us can have books. At the library. Abraham Lincoln was poor. He walked for miles and miles to borrow a book and he walked for miles and miles to return it. Abe took books to the fields and read while he plowed. At night, he read again by the light of the fire. In time, he read just about everything there was to read for 50 miles around the Lincoln cabin. On summer evenings, children gather around Mr. Potts and ask to hear stories. On summer evenings, it is nice to smell fresh cut grass, watch lightning bugs, and listen to stories. On summer evenings, Mrs. Potts serves lemonade and cookies while Mr. Potts tells stories. Stories about Abraham Lincoln. In school, we have been learning about Abraham Lincoln. One day, Miss Robin, our teacher, said, our class has been chosen to prepare an assembly program celebrating Lincoln's birthday. Would anyone care to make some suggestions? We could tell stories, said one boy. We could tell how Abraham Lincoln was born in a log cabin in Kentucky. We could tell of the hardships of his family suffered because the soil was poor and there was little to eat. We could tell how Abe didn't even have a real bed and had to sleep on a mattress of leaves. We could tell how Abe helped out with chores, said one boy. We could tell how he carried water from the spring and kept the wood box full and how as he grew older, he chopped down trees to clear the land for planting. We could talk about Abe's mother, said a girl. We could tell how she taught him to be honest and good and to mind his manners. We could tell how smart Abe was, said another girl. We could tell how it wasn't long before he was the best speller in his class. I have a suggestion, I said to Miss Robin after class, but I have to whisper it to you. And why must you whisper, she asked. So it can be a surprise, I answered. A wonderful surprise for everyone. Very well, she said, whisper it. So I whispered it. Miss Robin smiled. That would indeed be a wonderful surprise, she said, and a wonderful experience as well, provided Mr. Potts is willing. What do you think his suggestion was? 
Mr. Potts was willing. You could wear your stovepipe and your frock coat, I said. Mr. Potts tried on the hat and coat. He looked so much like Lincoln, I couldn't help saying, if only you had a beard. Do you know, said Mr. Potts, I have always wanted a good reason for growing a beard. It has been said that Abraham Lincoln had a good reason for growing a beard. His reason was a letter he received from a little girl. How handsome you would look with a beard, the little girl wrote. Abraham Lincoln loved children. He must have thought it was a good idea too, for it wasn't long afterwards that he was wearing a full grown beard. Now Mr. Potts has a beard. It's black with streaks of gray, just like Abraham Lincoln's. Now people look even more surprised when they see him. On the morning of Lincoln's birthday, Mr. Potts stepped out of his house dressed in his stovepipe and frock coat and drove away in a rush. He had a special appointment, a very special appointment. Something most unusual is about to happen, said Miss Robin from the school stage. It was later that morning, the Lincoln's birthday celebration was almost over. Someone has come, she said, to take us on a journey, a magic journey. He is going to take us back 100 years to the town of Gettysburg. It was there Abraham Lincoln delivered his most famous speech, the Gettysburg Address. When we arrive, we will hear those very words again. Now, in order for the magic to work, it will be necessary for everyone to close their eyes and keep them closed tight. When we reach Gettysburg, someone will ask you to open them again. Listen. You, you may open your eyes now, a new voice coming from the stage said. The children opened their eyes and were astonished at what they saw. Welcome to Gettysburg, said a tall, straight man with the face of Abraham Lincoln. A buzz ran through the audience. It's Abraham Lincoln, cried some. It's Mr. Potts, said others, smiling when they recognized him. Mr. Potts stepped forward on stage and began to recite the famous speech. Four go and seven years ago, Mr. Potts began, suddenly were in Gettysburg. 100 years ago, listening to President Lincoln tell us that America was convinced in liberty and all men are created equal. He told us never to forget the brave men who died to keep us strong and free, and we won't forget. We won't forget this day either. Now, Mr. Potts has moved away. His work has taken him to Washington, D.C. Mr. Potts is a lawyer, just like Abraham Lincoln. On the morning of the day, Mr. Potts moved I rang his doorbell for the very last time. Come in, he said. I have been waiting for you. I walked in, packing cases were piled everywhere. I have something for you, said Mr. Potts. I followed him into the study. His bookshelves were empty now. I would like you to have the stovepipe, he said, putting it on my head. The hat was big and covered my eyes. One day it'll fit you, said Mr. Potts. I would also like you to have this book about Abraham Lincoln's younger years. I have written something on the flyleaf. What does it say, I asked. It says to a fellow Lincoln file. What does that mean, I asked. It means to someone who admires and is greatly interested in everything about Abraham Lincoln. Now Mr. Potts is gone. It took a while getting used to not seeing him on his porch or walking about with a book under his long arm. It took a while getting used to the empty house next door. But the house isn't empty now. Someone new is moving in, someone called Mr. Pettigrew. I wonder what he's like. <sighs> look, that's a picture of George Washington. Does he look like George Washington? I think so. Thanks for joining friends. I hope you enjoyed this story.